Okay, this is the lecture video for Mac 1114 Trigonometry. We're in section 7.2 where we will look at the uh, inverse of the trig function secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Um, we start off at once again, just like we did in the last section when we were doing inverses of cosine, sine, and tangent by looking at the restrictions that allow the inverse to be evaluated. Okay, so first let's start with um, inverse secant. Um, one good way to maybe try and cut down on what you have to memorize is um, if you've memorized the inverse cosine, remember that inverse secant um, is related to inverse cosine because they are reciprocals. So they actually share the same restriction area. So secant and cosine reciprocally related you're going to use the same restrictions and those were from here to here same thing as inverse cosine okay those are the restrictions that is what they're telling you right here this means that your answer should be either in quad one or quad two do not leave this area when you spin to the location where you're indicating that your answer is. The value that you're allowed to plug in here for the domain or what we refer to as the argument of the inverse secant, also called the domain, has to be a number greater than one. Because when you actually put these in your calculator, and we will use the assistance of our calculator um, in these problems, not that you're not going to be showing plenty of the work by hand, but you actually don't have a key for this. You're going to be pressing this in as inverse cosine. And by using um, the reciprocal, you want whatever you're pressing in the calculator, obviously, to be equivalent to this. So the equivalent to this is inverse cosine. You're actually going to press it in the calculator like this. So I'm going to explain to you why this argument needs to be greater than or equal to 1. In the calculator, just so you can use the keys that you have available, you'll press it in as inverse cosine, which is reciprocally related to this, and you'll also use the reciprocal of this uh, domain. However, if you remember from the previous section, what's allowable for a domain for inverse cosine is that this number has to end up being um, in between negative 1 and 1. And the only way that that can happen is if you start off with a number for inverse secant that's greater than or equal to 1. So because you're going to convert this into um, a key that's actually on your calculator, um, that's why you have this domain, because of what it's going to turn into as you enter it into the calculator. Okay, likewise, you have the same set of restrictions, um, the same sort of restrictions for inverse cosecant. Think about what this is reciprocally related to, which is inverse sine. And if you remember those restrictions from the last section, that was like this, I referred to it as the banana belly. And I referred to this one as the cosine. This was really the restrictions in the last section for inverse cosine, which is related to inverse secant. This was really the restrictions for inverse sine, which is reciprocally related to inverse cosecant. And so you have your restrictions for your answer, and they're stating that right here, that you should be between pi over 2, that's this location up at the top, and negative pi over 2, telling you your answer must be in that range, in that area. Here, your answer has to be from 0 to pi, just like it says right here. Okay, same um, comments with regard to why this domain has to be greater than or equal to 1, because you're going to end up feeding it into the calculator using its reciprocal cousin sign, but in its inverse form. And if you're using the reciprocal function, you're also going to use the reciprocal of this domain. That's how you enter it in the calculator. I don't know that I keep, I'm 
you could keep writing calculator over and over again, but just to be clear. Okay, the, uh, the only, these two, though, you're not using um, the reciprocal restrictions. So for inverse uh, cotangent, they're telling you that it's actually sort of like uh, the cosine, the, what, what the inverse cosine was in the last section, only the endpoints are not usable or not included. So you can't give that as an answer. You can't give that as an answer. 0 or pi, but you can give any angle in between. Those are your the restrictions on your answer whenever you are doing inverse cotan. And if you're going to enter um, inverse cotan in your calculator, which you also do not have a key for, you will, same approach, you'll go inverse tan of the reciprocal. You're using the reciprocal function but in its inverse form and as well as the reciprocal of this domain that they give you. In the case of the inverse cotangent, what they give you for um, the domain can be anything from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so let's start getting into the problems. Uh, first, they'll just, you know, try to drag some definitions out of you. So determine whether the statement below is true or false. The inverse cosecant is not defined. Okay, you have that information right above in the boxed off um, restrictions and theorems and definitions. All of that's right in here. Look, here's inverse cosecant. That domain has to be something greater than or equal to 1. That is not greater than or equal to 1. And as a matter of fact, even your calculator would tell you that it's not defined. I mean, you can tell just by looking at the definition. This definition says for inverse cosecant, this domain has to be greater than um, 1. And that value is not greater than 1. So this is not defined since the domain is not greater than or equal to 1 as it's supposed to be. That's the reason. You could get your calculator to help you out in understanding that this is not defined because I was just telling you how you will press each one of these into the calculator being that you do not have an inverse cosecant key. You'll press it in using the reciprocal of this function but in its inverse form while also using the reciprocal of this domain value. Reciprocals are written as 1 over the value. And when you press this into your calculator, your calculator will also tell you it's undefined. Okay, so let's see. The mode that I'm in is I'm feeding in radian numbers. So let me quit out of here. Enter, second quit. Okay, so now I'm going to do second function, inverse sine, and I'm going to do 1 divided by 0.6. And you see right away it quits, which means it's undefined. Okay, so you can get your calculator to help out. Okay, example two. Decide whether the following statement is true or false. The domain of the inverse cotangent is the set of all real numbers, and that is given right above. The domain of the inverse cotangent set of all real numbers. That's what negative infinity to infinity means. So this is true. This one was true also. This was supposed to be a true-false question, just like number two. Okay, so example three. Now we start getting into um, doing these problems. Okay, first thing that you're going to want to do is... Come off to the side and remind yourself of where you need to stay. Because that's the most uh, common mistake among students is that they leave the restricted zone to give their answers, and that makes it wrong. So that's your main gig is to be memorizing the restricted areas in this section as well as the previous section, section 7.1. Okay, so for inverse cotangent, these were the restrictions. You can just maybe draw a picture. It went from here to here, but 
the endpoints 0 and pi are not usable. But any angle in between 0 and pi is fine to give as an answer. So remember that inverses are angles, just like we talked about um, in uh, the previous section and how you will rewrite this in the non-inverse form. Cotan of some angle, which is what you're looking for, is equal to square root of 3 over 3. Now, you can use your calculator to assist you, but I want you to be able to give me a drawing that shows you verified that what the calculator is giving you actually works because just because you can press it into the calculator doesn't mean you're getting the true final theta. There are some problems where what you're seeing in the calculator still needs work on it in order to get the real theta. So you're going to show me each and every time that you know how to verify, show by way of a picture, a diagram, triangle that you're going to draw, that you know what quadrant to be in. That'll demonstrate that you understand this restricted area and that um, you also understand that there is a consideration of what quadrant should I be in with respect to the sign that I'm going for. I'm going for a positive cotan value. Now, where does the calculator play in? That you could actually feed this into the calculator because right now, here's what's going on. I know that I want a positive cotan value. This is positive. Well, if I'm only allowed to be either here or here, and cotan is defined as x over y, I can't possibly be in this quadrant, because the moment that you move over here to quadrant 2, cotan is negative, because x's are negative while y's are positive. That would make cotan negative over here. So you want to be over here where the cotan is positive. All right, so we're going to be in this quadrant right here with our drawing. So I'm going to move over here to make a clean drawing, not having this restriction information all over it. Okay, here's my rotating arm. You rotate into the quadrant that you've decided you need to be in in order to satisfy this restriction where you're showing that you know that you, need, you can only be in one or two, but also satisfying the restriction, I mean the requirement that cotan should be a positive value. That would have to be right here. From the edge of that rotating arm, travel to the nearest x-axis. I want you to show me what the reference angle needs to be, and your calculator can help you out right there and then as a result what the final theta is. Now this problem, because they always start you off with the easiest problems, you're in quad one. This is the only quad where the actual final theta, which is really just where this arm is, it's where your hypotenuse has rotated to. Um, it's, so when you're in quadrant one, that's the only quadrant where the final theta and the reference angle are the same. But knowing that reference angle is what's going to get you the final theta. And that's where I'm saying you can get your calculator to help out. So if you were going to put this in your calculator, what is inverse cotan of square root of 3 over 3? So you can see what this, figure out what this reference angle is. Remember, I was going over here how you enter each of these inverse functions, inverse secant, inverse cosecant, inverse cotangent. You'll use the reciprocal function in its inverse form while also using the reciprocal of the domain value. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Reciprocal to cotan, tan. So you have a usable key on your calculator. And then this domain value that they're giving you, square root of 3 over 3, don't forget to use it in its reciprocal form. So that if that's just an integer, you go 1 over the integer. If it's, just a, if it's not in fraction form, then you'll just go 1 over to make it a reciprocal. But if it's already in fraction form, just flip it over. So 3 over square root of 3. Your calculator is going to give you the reference angle. Okay, so let's press that in. Now, if you're going to be able to recognize these angles, I would suggest that if you're going to get your calculator to help out, 
with the reference angle as we're doing right now, I suggest that you put it in degree mode because you'll recognize it, whereas if it's in radian mode, you're not going to recognize it. You have to be able to control your calculator based on the type of problem that you're doing. Okay, so mode. Let's go to mode. Let's get in degrees. Press enter and then quit out of there. Okay, now let's do inverse tan of 3 over square root of 3. Second, inverse tan, 3 divided by second function square root. Call up that square root symbol. Close that parenthesis. Give a partner to that first parenthesis and you get 60 degrees. So we now know that our reference angle is 60 degrees. Same thing as pi over 3. You're going to give your answer in radian form. It's just that if you want to get your calculator to help out, um, you're going to have to keep it in uh, degree mode. But you should you know, be knowing at this point that 60 degrees is the same thing as pi over 3, 180 divided by 3. When that's the case, now show me that you um, understand that this actually having this reference angle actually gives you this. That's where your work is going to come in. You did cut down on some of the work by getting your calculator to help you, but now show me that you understand that based on this reference angle, you will get a cotan value of square root of 3 over 3. So we learned in special right triangles that always across from the 60 is square root of 3 over 2. And the short leg is one half. Across from the 60 is the long leg, which long, this vertical leg plays the role of the y value. And then this would be the short leg across from the 30 degree angle. Okay, so does this truly give a cotan value of square root of 3 over 3? Because if it does not, then something's wrong. So cotan... And the angle that we're doing it for is this uh, reference angle right here. I guess I can do that. Is x over y is the definition. That would be one half divided by um, the y value, which is square root of three over two. And then to simplify this you would float this divisor up to the top and flip it over so that it wouldn't be on the bottom anymore. It would be up at the top. The twos would cancel in this case, leaving you with 1 over square root of 3. However, when you rationalize that, is that equal to the cotan value you wanted? You'd have to multiply by the bottom by square root of 3 and the top by square root of 3, which would give you square root of 3 over 3. And in fact, that is exactly what you wanted. So what was the um, angle that was responsible for this? Well, this reference angle gave us the perfect values, the angle, the values in the right position to, and to allow us to get a cotan value square root of 3 over 3. But remember, you're trying to give this final theta. I want to stress that, and it's hard to stress that when the problem is in quadrant 1 because students have a hard time, uh, sometimes have a hard time at this stage, um, so early in Chapter 7, of knowing the difference between theta and the reference angle. Because in this quadrant, they're the same, but once you get into any of these qu other quadrants, they are not. So even in a case like this, where this is going to match this, if the reference angle is pi over 3, so is this. Because this is what you're looking for for your final theta, even in the harder problems. How far would you have to rotate from 0 degrees to get to where this hypotenuse is? And that would be pi over 3. It's always going to be the same as the reference angle when you're in quadrant one. So final answer, pi over three. Okay, moving on to, and you'll get more of a sense of the difference between the reference angle and the actual final theta that you're going to give for your answer as we go into, uh, you know, some of the harder problems.
are the ones that require a little bit more knowledge of negatives and positives and all of that. Okay, so here we get into one with a negative. Okay, this is equal to some angle that we ultimately seek to find. I can write it like this in its non-inverse form by just switching this and this. We learned that in the last section. Okay, so look what this is telling you. There's a negative here. You want to obey the restrictions for inverse cosecant, but you also want to be where the cosecant is negative. So let's remind ourselves what the restrictions are for inverse cosecant so we don't break those restrictions. This is reciprocally related to sine, and the restrictions were actually based on inverse sine, which went from here to here. Anything from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is fine to give as an answer. So when you draw your picture, you can be in quads 1 or 2. However, you also want the cosecant to be negative. And if the cosecant is going to be negative, that's never going to happen in quadrant um, 1. You need to be in quadrant 2. Okay, so that being said... And it's not quadrant two, excuse me, let me say, say that better. <laughs> you can be in either quadrant one or quadrant four. So you're going to spin down here to draw your picture. Okay, so there's your rotating arm in the quadrant that you want to be in down here in quadrant four. And always as soon as you get to the end, travel up to the x-axis and create that right triangle. Now, we need to know what the reference angle is because once we know what the reference angle is, we can then find the actual theta. One gives you the other. Okay, so we can get our calculator to help out a bit. Your calculator will give you the reference um, angle. So if you're going to press this, into the calculator to get help with what that angle is, you can press it in um, based on the reciprocal of this because we don't have a key. We really want to know what the angle is that this inverse is equal to. We need to use keys that we do have on our calculator. Sine is the reciprocal of cosecant but in its inverse form. So you're using the reciprocal function to this and also the reciprocal to that domain value that they're feeding you. Just flip it over. That does not mean get rid of the negative. Okay, and that will be equal to, let me move this over a little bit. So inverse cosecant. Okay, so this is going to be our reference angle. Okay, let's see what we get for that. Second inverse, second inverse sine, then we're going to feed in negative 3 divided by 2 times square root of 3. Let's see if I can do this. Negative 3 divided by, let me try and do this value first, 2 times 0, 3, close that up, and then I'm going to go second inverse sine of that value that I just created. Okay, so that time it worked. Okay, so one more time. Let's see how I pressed it in here. Let's go over how I pressed it in here. The, the value that you were trying to do the inverse sine of was negative 3 divided by 
and I needed to make it do this denominator first. So this is what I did. I just worked on feeding in the value right here, negative 3 divided by, but I want it to calculate this divisor before it goes negative 3 divided by the divisor. I want it to know what the divisor is as a single number, so you force your calculator to work on that first. 2 times square root of 3, and that stopped it from quitting on me. Okay, so getting a value right now for this domain value. And now I wanted to do the inverse sign of that value. So second, inverse sign, dump in that value by pressing second, answer. And you get negative 60 degrees as your answer. Okay, now let's just make sure this is right. So you're, what the calculator is always giving you disregarding the negative, it's always giving you the reference angle. But now it actually gave you the final uh, theta also. Because if you're in a triangle like this, if this is 60, then the long leg has to be across from it. And it would be negative because this is the y coordinate. And you're going to show me that you understand that this works. This would be one half. We wanted our cosecant, and this is where showing that you're going to be showing that you know how to draw this. You're getting help with the reference angle. And then you're going to show me that you understand that this particular arrangement of numbers, having square root of 3 over 2 negative as your y coordinate and this as the x coordinate, would in fact give you this cosecant value. Now come over here and show that you understand that cosecant is it's related to sine. Sine's y over r. This is the reciprocal of sine. We wanted cosecant to come out to negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. Otherwise, this is not right. This reference angle is not right. The final theta is not right. Okay, so let's make sure it, it, it in fact works. Okay, my R value in any special right triangle is 1. This is the R value, the hypotenuse. And um, so it's 1 over my Y value, which is negative 3 square roots of 2. Let's simplify this to see if it really is this negative 2 square roots of 3 over 3. So this would float up here and become the reciprocal, but not losing its negative. It's just up at the top now which would be 1 times negative 2, negative 2 over square root of 3. Is that equivalent to this? Well, let's try and rationalize it to see if it looks exactly like that. Okay, and this would be negative 2 square roots of 3 over square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. Perfect. So we got exactly what we needed using this reference angle, but... Remember, in the end, regardless of, and you can put the little angle here that you used as the reference angle. At the end of the problem, you're giving this, the final theta. It's where the hypotenuse is. And your calculator sometimes won't give you that exact final theta. So make sure that you understand that the final theta is how... How, what kind of a rotation do you have to do from zero to get to where this hypotenuse is? And that would be negative 60 degrees. So I know, And give your answer in radian form, pi form. So I know your calculator did give you exactly negative 60 degrees, but you need to um, master the skill of knowing the difference between the reference angle and theta because sometimes you will have to do part of it on your own. So theta was negative 60 degrees in the final answer. Okay, moving on to inverse secant. Okay, so inverse secant, let's write away. We understand we're looking for an angle, but it's restricted because it's an inverse. So what are the restrictions for inverse secant? Well, I think it's related to cosine. And whatever the restrictions were for inverse cosine, these are the same. Those restrictions were here. 
You can be anywhere from 0 to pi with your answer. So let me think. I can rewrite this just by switching these two, which says secant of some angle is negative square root of 2. There are no negatives over here. Therefore, you must be in this quadrant. So when you go to do your drawing, you're going to rotate over to quadrant 2. There's your rotating arm. Go from the edge of that arm to the nearest x-axis and form your triangle. Get your calculator to help you with the reference angle. Okay, reference angle. Let's see. We can get our calculator to tell us what the reference angle is by knowing how to feed it into the calculator. Okay, this would be inserted in the calculator using this key. You do not have a secant key. So you're using the reciprocal function, but in its inverse form. And you're also going to use the reciprocal of this domain. So instead of square root of 2 over 1, 1 over square root of 2. Don't lose the negative. Okay, so that you should be able to feed in okay. So let's see, let's go on, clear. So this would be second inverse cosine, feed in negative 1 divided by square root of 2. And I got 135 degrees. And I don't know if you know what that is. So it, is, it gave you the final answer again. This is 135 degrees, which is the same thing as, you need to give it in radian form though, uh, 3 fourths pi. Okay, show this now on your picture. I want you to show that, okay, if you're going all the way from here to here, that, that is your final theta that we seek to get. Um, what is the reference angle here? Well, where you have these square roots of 2 is where you have a 45 degree angle. That would make this square root of 2 over 2. It would make this square root of 2 over 2 as well, but negative, because remember the horizontal leg on the triangle is x. x's are negative over here, and the vertical leg <coughs> on the triangle is y. Okay, so <coughs> so if this is one fourth right here, the reference angle, and make sure that it works. Okay, so you're going to come here and you're going to show me, okay, secant is defined like this. We're doing it for a 45 degree triangle using the values that are created by a reference angle of 45 degrees. <coughs> Excuse me. Secant is R over X. R value is 1. That's the hypotenuse. So that's what you would get using the values on that triangle. Float this to the top. <coughs> and it would be equal to 2 over square root of 2. But if you rationalized it, would you actually get this? So this would be negative 2 square roots of 2 over 2. This would cancel, and you would end up with negative square root of 2. So this is perfect. It is what you um, sought in your um, calculations. We got the calculator to help us out. It even gave us the final answer. It gave us 135 degrees, and that's the same thing as 3 fourths of a pi. Okay, and that would be because if you're rotating all the way to towards 
one pi, which is considered four fourths. But you stop one fourth, which is the reference angle, before you get to four fourths, you're at three fourths. So that's your final answer there. Okay, I don't mind if you use the calculator for these, but show that you understand why that's the answer. That's where you're going to be able to show your work. So you're not all, you're checking your work before you even get the answer. Okay, let's go to example six. Here we're finding the exact value of inverse cotangent square root of three. So let's go through those moves. It's an angle. So I want its cotangent of some angle. That cotangent value should be positive square root of three. I'm looking for a positive here. First, I want to remind myself of the restrictions for inverse cotangent, which are from here to here. Okay, then we're going to make sure that we are in the proper uh, location in order to get a positive. Over here, you have negatives. The x's are um, negative. So, you know, cotangent is made up of x and y. So if one of those is negative while the other one's positive, which is the case over here, you can't possibly get a positive. So you need to be in quadrant one. Okay, so show a spinning arm in quadrant one. Come down to the x-axis, make that triangle. You're looking to show what the reference angle is, but in the end, your final answer is theta. However, in quadrant one, they match. The reference angle will be equal to the final theta um, in quadrant one, only in quad one. As I pointed out, that's not the case for any other quadrants. Like, for instance, look at this uh, answer that we just got. Final answer was 3 pi over 4, but the reference angle was 1 pi over 4. This theta is your final answer, which is why I keep highlighting it like that. And they don't match once you get into quadrant 2, 3, or 4. Okay, likewise in this problem that was above. The reference angle was pi over 3, but the final answer was negative pi over 3 because you'd have to rotate in a negative direction to get to zero, from 0 to where this hypotenuse is. Okay, so for example um, 6, we were looking for uh, the reference angle. And so I've been teaching you or going over how to uh, feed these into the calculator. So if you want to feed this into the calculator, you would use the inverse tan key. They're reciprocally related. And you'd also use the reciprocal of this. So instead of square root of 3 over 1, 1 over square root of 3. Now that might give you the final answer. Sometimes it gives you the reference angle. So let's see what it's giving us here. Okay, so I'm going to go second, inverse tan, and we're going to go 1 divided by square root of 3. And we got 30 degrees. 30 degrees is the same thing as 180 pi divided by 6. And then it gives, and that's the final answer as well. Verify that this works. I do want you, I don't want you to leave the work area until you verify that it works. Okay, pi over 6 is 30 degrees. Always across from 30 degrees is the short leg. And then across from the 60 degrees, which would have to be this other angle, would be the long leg. We're doing cotangent. We want cotangent of this angle, this reference angle to be equal to square root of 3. So let's see if it is. Cotan is defined as x over y 
This is your x value, the horizontal leg. This is your vertical leg. So it's x divided by y. Float this up to the top, flip it over. Choose cancel, leaving you with that positive square root of 3 that you wanted. So we just verified. that this arrangement actually works. Okay, so final theta here. Same thing as the reference angle because we're in quad one. Okay, moving on to example seven. In example seven, it says find the exact value of the expression for inverse cosecant of negative two. Okay, so same thing. You can write this in non-inverse form by just switching the theta and the negative 2. Okay, let's remind ourselves of the restrictions for inverse cosecant. It's related to its reciprocal sign, inverse sine, and the restrictions for inverse sine were the following. Anything from pi over 2 negative pi over 2 is acceptable. So you can wrote, you can either be in quad 1 or quad 4. Of course, you want some negatives. That's not possible in quad 1, so you need to be down here. Okay, we want to know what the reference angle is as well as the final data. So we can get our calculator to help out with that. Okay, so our calculator, we would enter something like this, which we do not have a key for. We don't have a key for any of the inverse functions that we're studying in this section. So we use their reciprocal cousins. So this is related to inverse sine. And not only are we using the reciprocal uh, function, inverse function, but also the reciprocal of this domain. So instead of 2 over 1, 1 over 2, do not get rid of the negative. That's not what reciprocal means. And we'll see if it gives us the reference angle or the actual... Well, I'm going to list the reference angle regardless of what the calculator gives, but the calculator will always indicate what the reference angle is. Okay, so it's second... Inverse, we're feeding in negative 0.5, and we get negative 30 degrees. So it's actually giving us the final answer. But reference angles are always positive. But your final answer may be negative, and I just want to make a distinction between that. Reference angle is always positive. But then in the end, when you're saying where this is, which your calculator has already told you, you're answering how do I get to where this hypotenuse is by rotating from zero? And you'd have to drop down 30 degrees, thus signifying a negative rotation. So your final theta is negative 30 degrees, which is the same thing as negative pi over 6. However, I want you to verify before you leave the problem that this actually works. Show me that the help that your calculator gave you does result in a cosecant value of negative 2. So across from the 30 is always the 1 half. This is your y coordinate. Y coordinates are negative down here. Across from the 60, which would have to be here, is always the long leg value, square root of 3 over 2. X's are positive over here. So what would your cosecant value bear? You can put 30 or five or six there. Let's see. Definition for cosecant. Well, it's related to sine. Sine's y over r. This would be the reciprocal definition. The r value in a special right triangle is 1. Your y value is negative 1 half. So by the time you float this to the top, flip it over, it becomes as a value, your answer becomes 1 times negative 2, negative 2. You just verified that the cosecant is indeed 
negative 2 with the help, help of your calculator in allowing you to know what the reference angle was. Okay, now I've really stressed how to use your calculator in order to help you get these problems started where you're finding an exact value. So we already are, uh, you know, pretty well set with using the calculator, but of course we're still going to do these. Okay, so we're saying that the way that you press this in to find the value rounded to do decimal places, you still have to be aware of the restrictions and the sign that you're going for here. Okay, so let's, uh, you know, we'll see what the calculator gives us, but we're always going to make sure that we're in the right quadrant with the answer that we're being given. So this is equal to some angle, which we're going to get our calculator to help us with. We can get our, um, you can write this in its non-inverse form by just going secant of some angle is equal to positive 2. That's the domain there. All right, so first of all, inverse secant does have restrictions. It is restricted based on its reciprocal cousin, the cosine. Inverse cosine had these restrictions. You were restricted to quads 1 or 2. And now you want your value to be positive. If you come over here, being that secant is the same thing as r over x, and the x's are negative over here, that is not going to work. So you need to be in this quadrant. Okay, in this quadrant, the secant value is positive. And you could always use that saying, all students take calculus, or you can think of it in terms of x and y's. Okay, this is defined as r, which is 1 in this case as r over x, but x's are negative over here, so you can't be in that quadrant because you need your secant value to be positive. Okay, knowing that we're in quadrant 1. Um, and we're, by being in quadrant 1, we're obeying these restrictions and we're getting a positive secant value. You're always trying to get both of those things to happen as you start the problem. So we've settled in on the fact that we're going to be in this quadrant. Okay, so let's see. So just pressing it in, pressing in um, inverse secant of 2 is not possible because you don't have a key. So in your calculator, you could go like this. You could use inverse cosine instead. And inverse cosine is equivalent to this as long as you use the reciprocal. The reference angle given by the calculator. Second inverse cosine, we're feeding in one half. We get 60 degrees for that. And since we're in, and that's the same thing as pi 180 divided by 3. That's 60 degrees because they want you to give me answers like that. Now, since we're in quadrant 1, Yes, the reference angle, and you can close up the triangle if you'd like. When it says use the calculator, you don't have to verify the, you know, that the legs and everything come out to be that value. I'll let you just do the whole thing by calculator. So um, we are in quadrant one like we wanted to be. And the calculator said that this was 60 degrees, and therefore this theta is also 60 degrees. A reference angle and the final theta are equal in quad one. Okay, these are equal when you're in quad one. Okay, let's go to this next one. Using the calculator again, what is the inverse cotangent of negative 4? We know it's equal to some angle. You can rewrite it in its non-inverse form. You can remind yourself of the restrictions for inverse cotangent, which is anything except these endpoints that I left open. 
anything from 0 to pi, but not including the endpoint 0 and pi. So you can be in either this quadrant or this quadrant. You're going for a negative cotan value, which is defined as x over y. There are no negatives over here, so you need to be in this quadrant right here. Okay, so somewhere over here. Let's see what the calculator will do for us. According to the calculator, this needs to be entered as, we don't have that key, so use its reciprocal cousin in its inverse form as well as using the reciprocal of the domain that you've been given. Okay, so this is second inverse tan. We're feeding in negative one-fourth. And let's see, now these answers, uh, they want you to round to two decimal places, so you should really have this in radian mode. I mean, we can take the answer that we already have and put it in radian mode, but if they're asking you in the instructions, which I was not looking at, to give this in radian mode, then I can still give it like that. This in radian mode would just be give the decimal form of that. But you might as well do the whole problem. So why don't we, uh, for this problem, for example, uh, 9, just do it all the way. And you can do all of your calculator problems like this. Keep it in radian mode. If they say to round, because radian rounding to a certain number of decimal places indicates that you need to be in radian mode. So let's see. This answer rounded to two decimal places would be a function pi divided by three. So this would be 1.05. Okay, I just pressed that, my final answer for example number eight, and it's 1.05. This one, I'll just do it in radian mode the whole way so I don't have to do this conversion at the end. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to change the mode here. When you're doing finding inverses in exact form, <clears throat> I would, cons I would um, keep it in degrees. If you're looking to get a reference angle um, that you're going to recognize, you don't want it in radian form. But if they're telling you to use your calculator and round to two decimal places, then you don't need to recognize the angle because you're not going to go and verify by putting values along the sides of the triangle um, in order, you know, to finish off the problem and provide the work. These you're doing strictly by calculator, so we can keep it in radians. So radians, get out of there. <clears throat> now let's do this again. So inverse tan of negative one fourth. So second. Inverse tan, feed in negative 1 divided by 4. And you get um, negative 0.244, on and on and on. Now let's see what that means, because this is saying that we're going to rotate down to negative uh, 0.25. That's indicating a negative rotation, because this the calculator has been giving us the final answer. But that number, if you take the negative off of it, is also the reference angle. So let's see. Where did we decide we needed to be? <clears throat> so this is a problem where you're going to have to know what you're doing. We want to be over here in quad two. Yet look what the calculator is giving us. They're saying rotate to negative 0.25. If you rotate to negative 0.25, you're down here. So you have to understand that the value that you are um, being given <clears throat> can be used as the reference angle. So we're going to um, take what the calculator gave us, but in its positive form. Point 0.2, I'm going to hold on to four digits there because I'm in the middle of the problem, 2450. Now come over here, 
let that reference angle be equal to 0 0.2450. <clears throat> and now give the final theta. The final theta is how far from zero must you rotate to end up right here. And you can close up this triangle. I'm not asking you to verify the values on the legs that they actually give you a four because it's a calculator problem. But you do have to know what to do with the theta that the calculator is giving you. So this can be used as the reference angle. <clears throat> Unless you look at this and you see that it's actually in the quadrant where you need it to be, then you um, will use it as a reference angle. Okay, so where is this hypotenuse? How far we would we have to rotate? to get right here to where this hypotenuse is. Well, right here is one pi. So if you were rotating and you're trying to get, get all the way to one pi, however, you stopped this much before you got to one pi. You were rotating, rotating, and you stopped right here, which is 0 0.2450 before you got to pi. So that means this answer is one pi minus the part that you never made it through. <clears throat> 0 0.2450. So this theta, pop that in your calculator, 1 pi minus 2, 0.2450. And you get 2 point, we're supposed to be rounding off to the two decimal places, so 2.90. That'll get you in the proper quadrant and you're obeying for, um, you know, for getting a negative. You wanted to be in a quadrant where you could get negative values for cotan because when you rewrite it, that's what it says, even though you can tell right from here, and you wanted to obey these restrictions. So final theta was 2.90. Okay. Okay, moving on to problem number 10. Okay, problem number 10, one more calculator problem. So we know we're looking for this angle. We can rewrite it as cosecant of theta is equal to negative 2. I'm going to remind myself of the restrictions for inverse cosecant so that I obey them as I um, approach my answer for this problem. So for this is reciprocally related to sine, and the restrictions for inverse sine were from here to here, pi over 2 to negative pi over 2. <clears throat> All right, so I can either be in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4, but yet I'm looking to get a negative cosecant value, and there are no negatives here, so you have to be down in this quadrant. So here's my rotating arm, which really plays the role of the hypotenuse. <clears throat> and you can close it up if you'd like, but you're really just looking for the reference angle here so you can get the final theta. So let's see what our calculator does for us. Let's look at the kind of answer it uh, gives us and see if it makes sense with respect to being in quadrant four and knowing that we can only rotate negatively from zero to get down into quadrant four. We're not allowed to go this way. So if it gives us some big positive um, angle, that means it's trying to get us to go through areas that we're not allowed to pass through. So we have to, you know, use good judgment as we see what the calculator is giving us. So to press this in the calculator, you would use a key that you actually have because you don't have this key, and that would be using the reciprocal of this, but in its inverse form, as well as the reciprocal of this, and seeing what that gives you. <clears throat> okay, so second 
inverse sine, so feed in this uh, 0.5, negative 0.5. Oops. Second inverse sine, negative 0.5, close that up, and you get uh, negative 0.5235. Okay, so it is allowing you to rotate negatively. If we round this off to two decimal places, we get negative 0.52. That will get you down here into quadrant. So this is always positive, but it is giving you the final answer, and you can make that judgment based on you'd only have to rotate a small amount. Use one for my negative. So the actual theta is 0.52. Okay, so this is your final answer. <clears throat> okay, so let's summarize this. If you're doing problems where you're doing exact values, which was most of the section, numbers 8, 9, and 10 were calculator problems. For the calculator um, problems, you're going to be in radian mode. Okay, maybe put that somewhere in your notes, numbers 8 through 10, radian mode. And that's because they're asking you to give radian type answers that you have rounded off to two decimal places. Whereas all the problems that we did from, well, 1 and 2 were just true or false. So everything that we did from numbers 3 through six in this particular outline because the problems are not in this exact order when you go into the homework. You have to look for problems that were like this and this this outline will cover all the bases but you they're not even going to come in the same order as this because I presented them in the order that the um, that the theorems were presented in. So three through six, you're going to want to be, when you're looking for exact values, you're going to want to be in degree mode. Okay, moving on to problem number 11. And once you get to... Uh, number 11, then you're into what's called these composite functions. It's one function with another one substituted in as the domain. And for these composite functions, you can see that uh, unlike the last section, they're made out of two different functions. So these, you're going to wor work it, work this first, find the value for that, then do the cosecant of that value. Okay, so we want to know, we're going to work on this first. Inverse tan of negative 1 is equal to what angle? It's an, you know it's an angle because it's an inverse. Inverses are angles, so you can rewrite them. Tan of what theta is equal to negative 1? You can get your calculator to help you with that, but if you're looking for an exact theta, and you, there's no mentioned here, and see it says exact value here, you're going to want to be in degree mode if you're going to get your calculator to help you with this. Now you may already know this. You may not need your calculator. The only time that you can get a tan value of 1, 1 or negative 1, is if you're in a 45 degree triangle. You will find that out if you press this in. But mode should be in degrees, just so you'll recognize it. Enter, quit. So if you were to go second, inverse tan, and press in negative 1, see, it tells you uh, that the final theta is negative 45 degrees, which means the reference angle is 45 degrees. So we're thinking here uh, inverse tan. And when you're doing inverse tan, there's restrictions. Inverse tan is like this. Those are the restrictions for inverse tan. That was from the previous section. 
And um, what they're just giving, what the calculator just gave you is it said, when we pressed in inverse tan of negative one, it gave us uh, a final theta of 45 degrees, which also means of negative 45 degrees. Okay, so what that means is this. When you're looking for your tan value to be negative, you have to be down here. There's no negatives up here. So this is where your calculator just put you. It told you that you have to rotate to negative 45 degrees, also known as negative pi over 4. Give the answers the way the software likes it. And that also means that this reference angle, reference angles are always positive. You'd have to rotate from zero down to negative 45 degrees, 45 degrees. So that's what this angle is right here. Reference angles are always positive, but if you're trying to give as your final answer, where would you have to rotate and in what direction from zero to get to this hypotenuse, it would be negative 45 degrees. So... Let's take that part of the answer, the negative 45 degrees that we got, negative pi over 4, and we're going to evaluate the cosecant at negative 45 degrees. So you can go based on this picture right now. You have figured out that you're in this situation right here. You're going to do cosecant at negative 45 degrees. So you can go based right on this picture. You can write it as pi over 4, whatever you like, or you can write it as negative 45 degrees because this is not the end of the problem. But what I'm saying is that this picture will suffice as the picture that goes with a rotation of negative 45 degrees. You want to close up this triangle now so you'll realize what's going on. Rotation to negative 45 degrees for this hypotenuse means your reference angle is positive pi over 4. That would mean that this leg is square root of 2 over 2, negative, because it's a y-coordinate. This leg would be positive square root of 2 over 2, because it represents the x-coordinate, and your hypotenuse in any special right triangle, 1. <clears throat> So if you're going to do cosecant, you need to know the definition of cosecant. It's related to sine. Sine is y over r. Cosecant's the reciprocal of that. Okay, so it would be 1 over, we are now doing this part. Okay, once you have a picture established, and we got our calculator to help us tell what, uh, where the hypotenuse was, uh, was, and therefore what the reference angle is, we then know what the values are on the triangle based on the reference angle. And then the y value is this negative square root of 2 over 2. Float that radical to the top and flip it over, but do not get rid of the sign. So this is negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 over square root of 2. This is no longer here. It's up at the top acting as a multiplier. Simplify this by rationalizing the denominator. This times this is 2. These cancel, so your final answer is negative square root of 2. These 2's cancel. Negative is still there. Square root of 2 is still there. Okay, moving on to example 12. Same thing here, you have a composite function, an inverse function, and then another one plugged into it. We're going to work it from the inside out. So we want to know what is the sine of 5 pi over 3. So that's not an inverse or anything, no restrictions. You're working on this first. So the very first thing that we're going to do is think about rotating to 5 pi over 3. Okay, right here is 1 pi, that's 3 thirds. This is 2 pi, or 6 thirds, and therefore 5 pi over 3. 
Okay, when you're doing regular trig functions, not inverses, you can rotate to wherever they suggest. So here's my rotation of 5 to 5 pi over 3. I've rotated all the way from here to here. However, that helps me form a triangle. Let me move this out so I can draw my triangle. Okay, this was 2 pi. And I stopped at 5 thirds pi rather than making it all the way to 6 thirds. I stopped 1 third before I got there. So therefore, that's what the reference angle is. I can close up this triangle by going from the edge of this rotating arm up to the nearest x-axis. My reference angle is 60 degrees. That's 60 degrees. Always across from 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. This happens to be negative because it represents, this vertical leg represents your y-coordinate. This leg, on the, other half, on the other hand, would be 1 half. This it represents the x value and is positive. Now we want the sine. The sine, and the r value is 1. <clears throat> the sine is just y over r. That's how it's defined as y over r off of this triangle. So y over r would be square root of 3 over 2 over 1. And it's negative, that square root of 3 over 2. So that is the value that we obtained inside this parenthesis. <clears throat> now we want to finish it off by evaluating the inverse cosine of this value. Inverses are angles. So now we're looking for an angle. So if you're involving inverses now, you have to remind yourself of the inverse cosine restrictions. Those restrictions were from here to here. It was that sunrise shape. You can be in quad one or two. However, you're going for a negative value. I mean, if you do rewrite this, you want cosine when you take it out of inverse form. And it's cosine is equal to this. Cosine of that angle is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, if you want the cosine to be negative, you have to be in this quadrant right here. That's where negatives are. No negatives over here. So that being said, you're over here. Remember, we're looking for an angle. The cosine is just the x value. So that's going to be right here. Horizontal leg always plays the role of the x value, the horizontal leg on the triangle, whereas the vertical leg is the y value, and that would have to be 1 half. It does so happen that the vertical leg, the value on the vertical leg, tells what the reference angle is. Always across from <clears throat> the 1 half, the short leg, is the 30 degree angle, also known as pi over 6. However, you, let me move this over so it's not in my way. You always have to be giving where this hypotenuse is. Where the hypotenuse is is the actual final theta. It's just that the reference angle makes your way to getting to that theta. So if we want to know what this final theta is, well, imagine. How far would you have to rotate from here to get to the hypotenuse? Because that's always what your final theta is. And when you're not in quad one, they don't match. It's not reference angle equals final theta. So where would you have to rotate to if this is pi over 6, this reference angle? Well, think about it. Right here is the 1 pi location, also known as 6 sixes. That's the 1 pi location. You were rotating on your way to 1 pi, but you stopped 1 sixth, 1 pi over 6, before you got there. Therefore, this final theta is 5 pi over, over 6, 5 sixes of a pi. And that is your final answer. <clears throat> okay, 
right, moving to this next one. Another composite function. You're being asked uh, to take the tangent of the inverse cosine. So first we're going to find the angle that represents inverse cosine. So inverse cosine, do this first. Inverse cosine. <clears throat> <coughs> of negative square root of 2 over 2 is equal to some angle. Okay, you can rewrite it in its non-inverse form if you'd like. Just to help you understand that you are looking for cosine of some angle that's equal to a negative value. You can remind yourself of the restrictions for inverse cosine. For inverse cosine, it's anywhere from here to here. However, you seek a negative. Therefore, you cannot be here. You have to be in this quadrant. That way, you'll obey these restrictions. You'll be in one of these two quadrants, but yet you'll also be in a quadrant where cosine values are negative. There are, there are no negative cosine values over here, but cosine values are negative in quad 2. Okay, once you've decided what quadrant you're in, put your rotating arm in the quadrant you want to be. You can come down to the x-axis and form your triangle. You're going to figure out what your reference angle is also. <clears throat> as well as what your final theta is, which will be where this rotating arm is. Okay, so... We know that the cosine, or in other words, the x value, cosine is just x over r, and r is 1, so it's really just x, is this horizontal leg. Horizontal leg is always the x. It's got a negative on it. <clears throat> this would have to be its partner, because when one of the legs is squared to 2 over 2, so is the other one. That's the 45, 45, 90. Okay, this... Uh, this y-coordinate would be positive in this quadrant. So anyway, you have a 45-degree angle here, also known as pi over 4. I want to keep reinforcing how to state your degree-type angles in pi form because they like you to give the answers in pi form. <clears throat> now, you're in the middle of a problem, so it really doesn't matter. You still have to go on from there. So you know that you're in this triangle right here. Um, and so you want to give the answer to, I mean, the answer to this, to this first part right here, is theta equal to, and this would be four-fourths. And this would be three-fourths. But that's not the final answer. You just know that you're working on a triangle that's located at three-fourths. So you could really just continue working on this triangle right now. You have a triangle already, you know, no need to draw it again. Um, you have a triangle drawn at three-fourths because that's what inverse cosine of square root of 2 over 2 negative is. It's a theta value that is equal to three-fourths, and with a theta value of three-fourths comes a reference angle of one-fourth. So in this triangle, the legs are as indicated, and you want to finish this off by doing the tangent of the triangle that you have just drawn. Okay, so in that triangle, and in any triangle, the tan value is y over x. y value being square root of 2 over 2, x value being negative square root of 2 over 2, which in the end turns out to be negative 1. And that's the answer for that problem. Two-part process. First, develop your triangle based on what's inside here. And then you can work the outer function after you've created a triangle after you know what the angle is. <clears throat> okay, moving to number 14. Find the exact value of the expression. We're doing inverse tan of four-fifths. Now, I don't believe these values are going to be anything that's familiar to us. 
So you're never going to get to the point where you know what theta is, but you can still work off of the triangle that you create here. You can find the secant based on the triangle that you're about to create. Work off of the triangle you create. Okay, so let's get started with this. Okay, so the inner function says, I'm going to do this first, inverse tan of 4 fifths is equal to some angle. I can even turn that around and write tan of the angle is equal to 4 fifths. Okay, so when you're doing inverse tan, let's remind ourselves where we're allowed to be with our drawings. Inverse tan uh, was restricted in this way. You could be anywhere from pi over 2 to negative pi over 2 with your drawing. Now I want my tan value to be positive. That means I have to be in this quadrant because the minute I move down here, X's are positive, but Y's are negative, so you're going to get a negative tan value. Here tan is negative, and here tan is positive. So we want to be in quad 1, okay, right in that quadrant right there. So since I'm in quad 1, let me get a better pencil here. I'm going to be right in here with my picture of my triangle. I'm going to put these values on the triangle, but since they're such weird values, you know, they're not one half or square root of three over two or square root of two over two, so it's not a special right triangle. But you can still put these values on your triangle. This tan is defined as y over x, so this is the y, this is the x. So y is four, x is five, and then um, you're going to be looking for the secant. And when you go to do the secant in step two, you're going to be doing the secant. So you don't know what this angle is and you're not, you don't need to find it because you're going to do the secant off of the triangle that you have created there in quadrant one. Secant is defined like this. Secant is um, R over X. It's the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is X over R. This is R over X. However, do you see that in this triangle you've created? You don't have the R value, so you need to use Pythagorean theorem to complete it, and then you can finish the problem. So it's hypotenuse squared is equal to leg squared plus other leg squared. These are the legs. That gives you 41 as your R squared value, and then you would have to take the square root here as well as here. So now we can finish this. R is square root of 41, and your x value, this is x, this is y, over 5. And that's your final answer there. You built a triangle based on inverse of tangent of 4 fifths is equal to some angle. You don't ever get to the point where you know the angle, but you don't need it for uh, purposes of finishing this problem using the outer function. Okay, and yet another composite function. This is the last one in the section. Okay, so we're going to build our triangle. Again, these are weird numbers. They are not what we're used to when we have a special right triangle. So we're going to work just with this um, negative 5. And we're going to build a triangle. So we're going to go inverse tan of negative 5. Five, this is first, is equal to some angle. We'll just put that angle, we'll just let it be the reference angle. I mean, even here I should have done that. I don't want to confuse you with reference angle and theta. So this will just be like our reference angle. And um, then you can rewrite this, tan of whatever angle you're talking about at the origin is equal to negative 5. That's the same thing as negative 5 over 1. And then you can jump right into designing your triangle. But 
get it in the right quadrant. So let's think about it. We're right now discussing inverse tan. And for inverse tan, we have these restrictions above. Okay, so you can be anywhere from here to here. Okay, now you want your tan to be negative. Tan can be negative down here because there's some negatives available, but tan is always going to be positive when there's nothing but positives. Because remember, tan's y over x. So you need to be in this quadrant this time. Now you're going to be in this quadrant with your rotating arm. In other words, your hypotenuse. Travel up to the x-axis to complete your triangle and attach these numbers. Tan's defined as y over x. So this is going to be negative 5. This is going to be 1. You need to know what this is because you're going to finish this problem in step 2 by finding the sine. Sine is y over r, but we don't have r yet. That would be the second step. So let's do your little reference angle here. You're never going to find that angle. However, in everything up until um, up until problem 13, we were able to find the angle because they were feeding us values that relate to special right triangles. But now all of a sudden in numbers um, 14 and 15, you don't you have numbers that are not related to special right triangles like four fifths and negative five so you're never going to get a chance to find that angle and you don't need it so we do need r though because we're going to finish this problem in the second step by going secant of the diagram that you have just created you just created this triangle down in quad four and we're going to find the secant off of that triangle that you're building so the r value is r squared is equal to leg squared plus this other leg squared which is 1 plus 25 which is 26. So if r squared is 26 then r is equal to square root of 26. Okay, and then now we're going to do secant based on this nice right triangle we've created. And in that right triangle, we need a definition for secant. Secant's related to cosine, which is um, x over r, so this would be r over x. The r is square root of 26. And uh, the x value is negative 5. Oh, no, wait. I think we're supposed to be doing sine. I just wrote down the, right, the wrong trig function. So let me fix this. Our outer function was sine. So we built this triangle, completed the triangle right here by using Pythagorean theorem, and then we wanted to do sine. So sine, just we're still doing it off the triangle. It just has a different definition. It is y over r, excuse me. So y over r is the definition of the sine value, which was the outer function here. So finishing this problem, we have the y value, which is negative 5, and we have the r value as the denominator, which is square root of 26, and then rationalize that denominator by multiplying the bottom by square root of 26 and the top by square root of 26. So this is negative 5 square root of 26 over 26. And that's your final answer. Okay, a little bit of everything that you're going to see when you go to do the homework using the software online. Okay, that completes the lecture video for section 7.2.